everyone, it's great to see you. I'm so glad you came to ICC Kids today. All summer, we've talked about how we can live with confidence. We feel confident when we practice really hard for a big game or performance. We know that after all that hard work, we can go out and play our very best. We feel confident when someone says something really nice about us. But there's a reason we can have true confidence that nothing in this world can ever take away. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. God loves you. He's always with you. He knows that you can make a difference in this world as you show His love to others. Today, we will learn about a letter Paul wrote. But first, let's get ready for some worship. I am pumped for this time that we get to sing to God and worship Him. Come on, everyone, up on your feet, and here we go. On my count, let's kick it off together. Three, two, one, hit it. Good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are. 
That was fun. It's time to go over our values. Our first value is love God. We love God because He loved us first. Our second value is love people. We love people because God loves all people. Our third value is have fun. We have fun because God gives us joy. Our fourth and last value is make a difference. We make a difference because Jesus did. It's time for another amazing story from the Bible. Well, this one isn't so much a story. It's something that the Apostle Paul wrote in a letter that reminds us how we can live with confidence. Paul wrote his letter to a group of people called the Ephesians, who lived in the town of Ephesus. Paul actually wrote the letter while he was under house arrest in Rome. He had to stay in a house and couldn't leave, so it was basically like he was in prison. So why was Paul under arrest? Well, he had been arrested because people didn't like the way he shared the good news about Jesus. In his letters, Paul encouraged believers in different churches and helped them understand how they could follow Jesus too. While he was there under arrest, Paul wrote this. Finally, let the Lord make you strong. Depend on his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor. Then you can remain strong against the devil's evil plan. Ephesians 6, 10 through 11. Paul was probably around a lot of people who wore armor, soldiers, guards, and the like. He was probably even chained to a soldier part of the time. That means every day he had the opportunity to study that soldier's armor in detail. He knew that dressed in full armor, a Roman soldier was ready to face any attack. But Paul also knew that the greatest enemy we face isn't one that we can see. Let's take a look at our Bible story to understand what Paul is talking about. What's up, people? I'm Graham, and I'll be your DJ for today's experience as we try to get to the bottom of this thing called confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. I know I need confidence, especially when I'm about to do something I've never done before, like DJ. But don't worry, I'll be ready as soon as I gear up. Let's do this. Now I'm ready. Who's up for some music? Hit it. Oh, sounds like I really, sounds like I really, sounds like I really, I really scratched it good, but no scratches on me. Not with my DJ armor on, I'm standing strong. In today's story, you'll hear about a different kind of armor that will help you stand strong. Now, let me play us out. <laughs> I think I've invented a new dance. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians, Chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. The Apostle Paul spent his last two years as a prisoner in Rome. But even though he wasn't free to travel, he shared God's truth with everyone who visited and often wrote strong letters to the churches he had started. One of those letters went to the believers at the church in Ephesus. Finally, let the Lord make you strong. Depend on his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor, then you can remain strong against the devil's evil plans. Now, armor isn't something we see every day. Maybe you think of this, or this. But remember, Paul wrote this letter when he was in prison. In the book of Acts, his friend Luke explains, When we got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself, but a soldier guarded him. This means that Paul was guarded by at least one Roman soldier every single hour of the day. In fact, Paul was probably even chained to that soldier. So every day, Paul had a great opportunity to study this armor in real detail. 
He knew that when dressed up in armor, a Roman soldier could withstand any attack by an enemy. Poe also knew that the main enemy we face isn't one we can see. Our fight is not against human beings. It is against the rulers, the authorities, and the powers of this dark world. It is against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly world. So put on all of God's armor. Evil days will come, but you will be able to stand up to anything. And after you have done everything you can, you will still be standing. See, our fight is not with human beings. Paul reminds us that the real enemy is spiritual forces of evil. Now that might sound really weird and creepy, but it's actually very simple. God has an enemy called Satan. Now we know at the end Satan is defeated, but right now Satan is trying to mess with what God loves most, people. We're fighting a battle with an enemy we can't see. And because of this, Paul says, we need a very special kind of armor. So remain strong in the faith. Put the belt of truth around your waist. A belt tied up loose clothing and held weapons, so a soldier was all ready to go. God wants us to prepare ourselves with the truth that he loves us and is always with us, and that he'll give us the wisdom to face any tough decision we have to make. Put the armor of godliness on your chest. This piece, sometimes called a breastplate, protected a soldier's heart and lungs and stomach. You know, all the important stuff. Paul says our protection is godliness. That means simply following God and what we do and say by loving God and loving others. It's our best defense against the enemy. Wear on your feet what will prepare you to tell the good news of peace. And check these out. Kind of sandals, kind of cleats. Roman soldiers actually wore shoes with nails sticking out of the bottom so they could get a good grip on rough and rocky roads. Paul says the way we can get a grip is to share the message of God's peace with everybody we meet, wherever our feet will take us. Thanks to Jesus, everyone can have peace with God. Also, pick up the shield of faith. With it, you can put out all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Rejected! A Roman soldier's shield was everything. Not only could a soldier block arrows and swords and spears, but he could get right behind this and charge, pushing back the enemy. And that's exactly what strong faith in God and his promises can do for us. Maybe the enemy tries to sneak in with the thought that God doesn't love me. But you can block that right away because you know that nothing can separate you from God's love. He promises that. Or maybe you're struck with a wave of doubt that you can't make a hard choice. But you can block that when you remember that God promises to guide your steps when you trust him. Put on the helmet of salvation. A helmet protects just what you think, your head and mind. The enemy likes to sneak attack with small lies and spiraling thoughts of negativity. But if you put on the helmet of salvation, trusting in God and following Jesus, that'll protect your mind. And take the sword of the Holy Spirit. The sword is God's word. When the enemy attacks, Paul says we have a way to fight back. Our weapon is the sword of God's word. Jesus himself used God's words from scripture when he was tempted by Satan. As Paul says, put on all of God's armor. Evil days will come, but you will be able to stand up to anything. And after you have done everything you can, you will still be standing. When you discover God's words written down in the Bible and hold them in your head and your heart, you can stand up to any attack by the enemy. Okay, so everybody knows we're going to have trouble in this world. We're going to break bones, get splinters, we're gonna get into arguments with friends and family members. Things are going to happen. But the Apostle Paul wrote that we're also going to face troubles we can't even see. So we'd better gear up. We've gotta put on God's armor. It's not the kind of armor you can see, but it is the kind of armor that will prepare you for the troubles you don't see. With God's armor, you can be protected from things like a bad attitude or negative thoughts. They can shield you from things that can make you wanna doubt what's true. Plus, Paul wrote that God has given you a weapon. It's true. Paul wrote that God's word is like a sword. When voices inside try to tell you you're not good enough or that you don't matter, 
Your sword can help you fight back with the truth. And the truth is, you do matter. And God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to save you from your sins. So, troubles will come, the ones you can see and the ones you can't. But the armor God has given you will help you stand strong through it all. That's the one thing to remember today. Use what God has given you to stand strong. Gear up! That way, whatever happens, you'll be ready. I think I make a pretty confident DJ, don't you? I gave an excellent performance on the turntable. Some might even say record-breaking. Or record-scratching, anyway. <laughs> I'll see you next time! Remember, Paul said to put on all of God's armor, the belt of truth, the armor of godliness on your chest, the good news of peace on your feet, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Holy Spirit, which is God's word. Then you'll be able to stand up to anything with the kind of confidence that can only come from God. God has given us everything we need to live with confidence and courage. So let's do this. Use what God has given you to stand strong. We're going to face trouble in this world. Unfortunately, difficult things will come our way. I mean, take a look at the past year we've had. So much trouble and heartache and sickness. But the good news is that God's armor will prepare us for troubles that we can't see. His armor will help us stand strong. Paul wrote that God's word is like a sword. That means it's sharp. It points to the truth. When the voices inside your head try to tell you you're not good enough, smart enough, or that you don't matter, your sword can help you fight back with the truth. The truth is you do matter. The truth is that God does love you. He loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for your sins so that you can have a relationship with him that will last forever. It's not always easy, but with God's armor, we can stand up to any challenges that evil tries to throw our way. We can remind ourselves every day that we can trust God no matter what by remembering his word. In fact, let's read our memory verse together right now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Philippians 1.6 Whatever comes your way, gear up. You'll be ready. God will help you stand strong in the armor he's giving you. Let's pray together. God, thank you for Paul's words. Thank you for giving us the armor that we need to fight against the things we can't see. Please help us guard our hearts and our minds with your armor so we can defend ourselves and stand strong. Please help us be confident as we trust in you and in what we know is true. Thank you for always being there with us and helping us live your way. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We can't wait to see you again next week. Bye.